The brand new Lord of the Rings MMO has been cancelled after several years in development, but why? Well, let's go and take a look at when the project started, who was involved, how it progressed, and ultimately why an argument between East and West was responsible for killing this game. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Drive Hayes, and like most nerds or geeks, I'm a pretty big Lord of the Rings fan. You can see I've got the books behind me as well. The films were great, the books were fantastic, most of the video games were really good, and there's a reason things are now referred to as Tolkien-esque. The guy literally wrote the book on what most fantasy tropes would start out as, the foundation for a lot of the fantasy genre we know today. So when I heard there was a new multi-million pound triple A Lord of the Rings MMORPG in development, I was pretty interested to see where it went to. but. As we know now, it was unfortunately not to be. Before we begin, consider dropping a like on the video or subscribing to the channel for more MMO stuff. Ring the bell so you don't miss a single future video. As usual, a huge thank you to my supporters on Patreon and Twitch who allow me to remain independent and do what I do. More on how you can support at the end. For now, let's begin. It's important to point out that there is already an MMO set in the Lord of the Rings universe, and it is still going. Lord of the Rings Online launched all the way back in 2007 and has seen several major expansions over its lifetime, including taking players through the Mines of Moria, into Helm's Deep, and then through the Forests of Mirkwood. If you are a fan of the Lord of the Rings universe, there is a lot of fan service in this game, and you will find a community ready to play. It's not the world's most populated MMO, but it does maintain a hardcore of players. It's pretty slow to start, and the graphics do take a bit of getting used to. It's definitely clunky by the smooth standards of today, but it's not a bad MMO. So with Lord of the Rings Online already existing, we had an MMORPG set in Middle-earth. If you were going to make a new MMO in Middle-earth, why not just improve the old one? Why not give Lord of the Rings Online a graphical update, a combat update, an engine update, a massive new expansion? And while that could have happened, you have to understand that Lord of the Rings Online didn't really hit the player count it was expecting. It didn't make the splash in the MMO landscape everyone thought it would do. So, instead of trying to resurrect, instead of trying to maintain an MMO that didn't do as well as they thought it would, it's probably going to be easier to start with a new game, build up the hype, build up the excitement for that game. So, with a new Lord of the Rings MMO planned, to fully understand exactly who's making it, we have to go back about 14 years. The story actually starts back in 2010 with a Chinese poultry company called Lei Yu. They were doing fine but not well enough, and when the poultry income dwindled in 2013, Lei Yu bought shares in game development company Digital Extremes. Digital Extremes are probably most famous for making Warframe. Then in 2016, Lei Yu decided to step even further away from the original poultry business and move more toward game development and bought British developer Splash Damage. These were the guys that made Return to Castle Wolfenstein, Batman Arkham Origins, and Gears of War 4. Then in 2017, they continued buying up studios by buying Certain Affinity, known mainly for assisting in the development of Call of Duty World at War and Black Ops 1, along with Halo Combat Evolved, and the 2016 reboot of Doom. Then firmly leaving the poultry industry and fed up of buying studios and wanting to make something of their own from scratch, in 2018 Lei Yu founded Athlon Games. Athlon Games had only one purpose, to create a newly revealed Lord of the Rings MMO. Now before we look at the next few years of development, let's just take a step back and look at the games companies that Lei Yu have bought up and see if you can spot a pattern in the kind of games they specialised in. Now they had Warframe, which was great. That means they were dipping their toes in the MMO landscape. But let's have a look at the other games that were really holding these companies up and let's just see if you can spot the pattern. Wolfenstein, Return to Castle Wolfenstein, Doom 3, Doom the 2016 reboot, Gears of War 4 and 5, Halo, the Master Chief Collection, Halo 2, Halo Reach, Halo Infinite, Call of Duty World at War, Call of Duty Black Ops 1. If you said, they're all first-person shooters, then you're absolutely correct. Lei Yu now had a lot of experience in the video game industry, but very, very little in the MMO industry. So they may not have had the experience, but they definitely had the money to find the talent, and they had the studio, Athlon Games. It was poised and ready. There was only one issue. 
If you go to the Athlon Games website right now, the first thing you'll notice is how it's unsecure. Then you'll see they've got a map of Middle Earth as the background. If you head to the news section today, you'll see the latest update is a news article they wrote about themselves back in 2019. And in the About Us section, you'll find a load of meaningless corporate speak, including We make games that players will want to play for many years, or Every game we make is a unique collaboration. So far, Athlon Games, you haven't made anything at all, so you're probably jumping the gun on those descriptions. But despite having no games to their name and no actual experience in the MMO world as developers, they quickly found some financial backers. In 2019, it was revealed that Amazon Games was investing in the product and assisting with the development. Now, Amazon Games, despite having the wealth and power of the Amazon brand behind them, aren't exactly a major gaming developer. They made Airport Mania back in 2010, a game for the App Store, then they made the Grand Tour video game for PlayStation 4, and now they're working on a brand new MMO of their own called New World, and don't worry, I will cover that in a video all of its own sometime soon. They've also tried to launch and then cancelled two other major games, Breakaway, cancelled in 2018, and then Crucible, which actually did release, but then got taken out of full release and put back into beta, and then killed a few months after. This means that while Amazon Games clearly have the name association of Amazon, they've not actually made anything amazing yet. If they were a lesser game studio without the safety of falling back onto Amazon's money, they would have been shut down a long, long time ago. But the problems really begin with the new Lord of the Rings MMO one year later in December 2020, when Layu, the company that owned Digital Extremes, Splash Damage, Certain Affinity, and Athlon Games, were completely bought out by Chinese mega corporation Tencent for $1.5 billion. Now, if you've never heard of Tencent before, that's probably exactly the way they like it. Despite being a multi-billion company, they like operating and existing in the background and keeping their name away from the companies they own. They're effectively a multinational conglomerate holding company. They buy up other companies and corporations of all sizes and then monetize them as well as they can. And when you look at the absolute massive variation of what Tencent own, you'll begin to get an understanding of exactly who we're dealing with now. Gaming companies and games owned and controlled by Tencent include 100% of Riot Games, that means they own League of Legends and Valorant. 100% of Funcom, that's Anarchy Online, Age of Conan, Conan Exiles, The Secret World, and Secret World Legends. 80% of Grinding Gear Games, that's a majority share in the action MMO Path of Exile. 40% of Epic Games, meaning the Unreal Tournament franchise, the Gears of War franchise, and Fortnite. A 10% stake in Sumo Digital, which gives them power over Crackdown, Forza, and Little Big Planet. And a 5% stake in Activision Blizzard, meaning they have a hand in controlling the future of World of Warcraft. They also have a majority holding share in the gaming website Miniclip, an unspecified investment amount in Discord, Roblox, and Platinum Games, who make Bayonetta and Nier Automata. Now that list isn't even every video game company they are connected with, and remember, that's just the video game list. Tencent are heavily involved in the rest of Chinese culture, including the Chinese mobile game market, the music industry, and several search engines, blogging sites, and video streaming sites. One of them literally called Tencent Video. Now, as far as MMO influence is concerned, a 5% stake in Activision Blizzard may not sound like much, but remember, to launch in China, World of Warcraft had to change several in-game graphics and heavily censor itself, including replacing all the skull models with something else and toning down the gore. Ripped open stomachs were patched back up, meat and bones on the floor replaced with bread and rat models and almost any skeletal models just straight up replaced with fully fleshed out versions. There's an Imager album I'll link in the comments showing all the interesting censorship changes. The Chinese censorship machine is strong enough to do this when a Western game releases. Imagine how powerful it could become if it controls the entire development of the game. Eastern censorship is incredibly powerful and influential, and most larger Chinese companies have to obey the government rules. With Tencent now owning Leiyu, which owns Athlon Games, it means Tencent are now in complete control of the development of the new Lord of the Rings MMO. Now, this acquisition by Tencent caused ongoing problems in negotiations between Tencent and the Amazon Games development team. 
and after two years of apparent disagreements behind the scenes, Tencent have decided to scrap the project entirely. We may never know the exact reason why, but compromise is not a word Tencent know, and if they can't get their way with everything, they would rather just destroy the project. So a brand new MMORPG set in Middle-earth many years before The Ringbearer's Journey, in development for four years under the guidance of Athlon Games and supported and funded by Amazon, gets scrapped after two years of less than favourable negotiations with Chinese megacorporation Tencent. What we knew about the MMO before it was scrapped is relatively sparse, pretty much that it was going to be set long before the events of the books and films so players could explore Middle-earth before the Ringbearer's journey became the focus, and not much else exists. So, several years of video game development entirely down the drain because East and West, Amazon and Tencent, couldn't agree on whatever it was. Obviously something big behind the scenes to make both developers say, right, we are scrapping this, it is a cancelled project. Because Lord of the Rings is not a small IP, and Tencent and Amazon are not exactly small developers. This is, however, strike three for Amazon Games. This is the third massive project they have started and cancelled, which makes me remarkably nervous for New World. That's meant to be a triple A MMORPG they're in charge of, and so far the only the only thing they've shown us they're skilled at doing is cancelling games. Lord of the Rings Online, the old version, is still playable, so if you want an adventure in Middle-earth, you can go and play that. It's clunky, it's quirky, and it's got its own issues, but hey, at least it's free. Cheers for watching! What do you think about the cancellation? Who's to blame? And given Amazon Games' track record of making terrible games and then just immediately cancelling them, did we really miss out on anything? They've not proven they can make anything good yet. Let me know in the comments. Another big thank you to the Patreon supporters and Twitch subs who make my channel possible. You can support the Patreon from just £1 a month and help me remain independent. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter and our Discord. And as always, have a great day.